Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. This is episode 45 and as ever this show is brought to you by loserpool.com. I'm your host Harry Simiu and on this edition we'll be looking back at the 4-1 victory over Fulham which took place on New Year's Day. Um, I want to apologise in advance for the poor sound quality um, and the fact that there's no video this time around. Unfortunately, I'm travelling for work so I'd probably get a few looks if I whipped out a camera um, and uh, all sorts on the train. So I thought it best to just keep it to audio this time around, but we'll be back with a video podcast uh, after our next fixture, of course. So as already mentioned on this show, I'll be looking back at that win over Fulham. We also have contributions from Mike Stavrou, Chris Davison and the Evening Standards, James Benj. So make sure you stay with us right until the very end. Right, going to kick off by looking at Unai Emery's team selection, as I always do. Uh, some of the key points uh, from his selection were that Lucas Torreira was rested. Um, if truth be told, I thought he was pretty poor up at Anfield. Um, and so Guendouzi was given the nod alongside Granite Xhaka in the middle of the park. Now, I'm not suggesting that's why Torreira didn't feature, or f- didn't feature from the start, I should say, Um but, you know, let's be realistic. And I said it on the last podcast, Lucas Torreira looked absolutely shattered up at Anfield and tired legs lead to mistakes, don't they? So I think Unai Emery was right um, to take him out of the firing line on this occasion. Lacazette and Aubameyang both selected from the start. Um, Aubameyang once again operating from that left-hand side with Lacazette playing through the middle. We had a back three of Mustafi, Koscielny and Socrates all three of our senior central defenders. And I was really intrigued to see how they would fare because in recent weeks, there's been a lot of talk about Unai Emery not having many options available to him. Um, The fact that he's been unfortunate with injuries. Well, I guess at the start of the season, you probably would have said this is our strongest uh, back three if we're going to play with a back three. Uh, So yeah, like I said, really intrigued to see how we'd get on. Um, And I'll come on to that a little bit later on. Ainsley Maitland-Niles returned to right wing back, having played on the right wing for Arsenal up at Anfield and, of course, grabbing himself a goal. Um, That would have done him a world of good, confidence-wise, even though he did get spanked in the end. Um, Mesut Ozil was ruled out again, a continuation of the knee problem that kept him out of the Liverpool clash. Uh, And, of course, Aaron Ramsey uh, started the game on the bench. Now, in the opening few minutes... Arsenal were moving the ball around really sharply. Uh, It looked as though Unai Emery had laid into the players following the Anfield annihilation and that he'd really, really fired them up. And based on that, you felt at that point we were going to see a good, really strong Arsenal response. But we seemed to lose our way a little bit. Um, and, And Fulham had two excellent chances, both of which fell to the young Ryan Sessegnon. And if truth be told, the youngster really should have scored both. But... Fortunately for us, he dragged the first one wide and he couldn't quite make contact with Andre Scherler's cross just moments later. Now, I spoke about having our three senior centre-backs in the side from the start, but we didn't look any calmer, any stronger or any more competent defensively. Um, You know, that was worrying, I've got to say. And having weathered that storm somewhat fortuitously, we opened the scoring on around about 25 minutes through Granite Xhaka of all people. Now, interesting, Granit Xhaka doesn't usually get himself in the penalty area too often, but he did say in his post-match interview that Unai Emery had instructed him and Matteo Guendouzi to get into the penalty area as much as possible and support the forwards. Now, he certainly followed the boss's instructions, didn't he? And, and Arsenal reaped the rewards as a result. Alex Iwobi's cross picked out Granit Xhaka and he had so much time uh, in the centre of the penalty area, time to take a touch and sort of poke the ball past Sergio Rico in the Fulham goal. Really, really poor defending on their part. Um, but credit to Granit Xhaka, he stayed composed when the ball fell to him. And I think that's his third goal in the Premier League this season. Uh, I think, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, after that, I felt as though we regained control of the game. We went on to create a few good opportunities following the opener. Um, and the one that comes to mind first is Aubameyang's near post header that went just wide. Half time came and, and you then felt that Arsenal were going to go on and, and win this fairly comfortable. Lucas Torreira came on for Shkodran Mustafi at half time, who had apparently 
felt some sort of injury. We still don't really know too much about that. But the feeling of confidence sort of strengthened, didn't it, when Alex Lacazette doubled our lead after a wonderful passing move down the left-hand side. And Sea Kolasinac unselfishly pulled it back to the Frenchman, who kept a really cool head and, and smashed it into the back of the net. But as always in Arsenal's case, things are never straightforward. Uh, Fulham rallied, Seri and Kamara came on, uh, and both of them had an instant impact. And within eight minutes of their introductions, the West Londoners were back in the game. Lucas Torreira was the man dispossessed by Seri in the lead up to the goal. Tired legs make mistakes. Um, and, and that's twice in two games now that the Uruguayan has been caught out in a similar fashion. And I'm not going to go overboard about it because for the most part of this season, he's been outstanding. But what I will say is this. Imagine, just imagine that was Granite Xhaka. What would we be saying? And, and so it's surely, you know, you can see the double standards and hypocrisy within sections of our fan base. And so I just wanted to highlight that. I just wanted to make that point. Not because I'm having a go at Torreira, uh, and not because I'm Granit Xhaka's biggest fan, but had that been Granit Xhaka, we would have seen a completely different reaction. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. Now, at 2-1, Fulham were in the ascendancy and the atmosphere at the Emirates turned from the flat kind associated with New Year's Day to one of real nervousness and fortunately for us, that only lasted 10 minutes or so. Aaron Ramsey came on to replace Lacazette and the decision was met with boos by the supporters. Now, I understand people's frustrations are really Lacazette being left out or replaced because, you know, I, I've voiced that opinion as well of late. But I think in this instance, it made sense. Fulham had brought on Seri, were in the ascendancy and Unai Emery spoke of adjusting the balance in his press conference those who booed him were, were left with egg on their faces in the end, weren't they? When four minutes after his introduction, Aaron Ramsey went on to seal the points. Um, but just going back to that point about Seri being introduced, I think it, Fulham would have had the upper hand in the middle of the park had we not adjusted our team a little bit. Um, and, you know, I've been quite critical of Unai Emery in the last few weeks. So credit where it's due, he got that one absolutely right. Um, you know, I've said this before, I'm not someone... That's got an agenda against Unai Emery. Um, I will praise him when he gets things right, but equally I will criticise him when he gets things wrong. And, you know, fair is fair. He got it right um, on uh, New Year's Day when he when he brought Aaron Ramsey on. Now, Aaron Ramsey, of course, popped up inside the box for that goal, as he has done so often throughout his Arsenal career. Finished it expertly and, and really reminded us, didn't he, of, of what he can do. He's done that a few times this season. And, and throughout this entire contract saga, his attitude when called upon has been exemplary. You've got to say, of course, he's, you know, now he's allowed to sign a pre-contract agreement with a European club if he wishes. And many were reporting ahead of this game that he'd already come to an agreement with Juventus. But their director, Fabio Paratici, has been quoted in the media as saying, yes, we are interested in Aaron Ramsey. He's a great midfielder. But at the moment, he's an Arsenal player. We will see. So nothing's done and dusted just yet. Um, so it still remains to be seen where Aaron Ramsey will end up. Uh, four minutes after Aaron Ramsey had wrapped up the points, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang stepped up to get himself on the score sheet. His deflected effort took him back to the top of the Premier League goal-scoring charts. Harry Kane has leveled things up since then, but Oba sits in joint top position now. Uh, overall feelings on the game, I think, you know, the scoreline probably flattered us, if I'm being brutally honest. We deserve to win the game overall, I felt, but perhaps not by a three-goal margin. Uh, Fulham were able to get out of backline far too easily, a backline that shows no signs of improvement. In the past, I've spoken about how our overall setup makes things difficult for our defenders, and I still believe that to a certain degree, but recent weeks have shown our players to be way under par, and, and without strong recruitment, I can't see how Unai Emery can rectify this issue. So what's the next move? Do we just accept the fact that we're always going to leak goals and focus on trying to outscore our opponents? Is, is that the temporary solution? I'm not sure, um, and that's for Unai Emery to think about, I guess. Um, David Ornstein, or the Ornacle, as some Arsenal fans like to call him, uh, of the BBC. He's usually a reliable source when it comes to Arsenal. 
um, you've got to say. And he's been speaking this week of a regret amongst some of the club's hierarchy in handing Mesut Ozil the bumper contract that they did, implying that it's having a huge impact on what they can do now in the transfer market going forwards. He also spoke about Ozil not fitting into Unai Emery's style of play and that at 30 years of age, there's basically no hope in him changing. So what do we do? Um, I'd like to see him in the side, but he's got to shake off these injury issues that have plagued this season so far. And and he's got to convince Unai Emery that he deserves his place, doesn't he? I I don't think the Spaniard is totally sold on Mesa Ozil. Um, I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts. What's the play on Mesa Ozil? What would you do? Uh, given the current situation that we're in. Uh, Tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. Now it's time to hear from some of our regular contributors. First up is Mike Stavrou, and then the next voice you hear will be that of Chris Davison. Arsenal 4, Fulham 1, back to winning ways at last, you know, after a couple of really bad results. It was a game of two halves, to be honest with you. Fulham had the best of it in the first half, I thought. Create some big chances. Ryan Sessegnon missing two sitters, really. If that fell to someone a bit more clinical, like Alexandra Mitrovic, could have been a completely different game. But, you know, we took the lead through my mate, Granite Xhaka. Good finish. Not sure what he's doing in the box, but regardless, you know, good goal. Um, and then secondly, uh, Alexandra Lacazette, who was taken off um, to the discontent of a lot of fans. But... You know, Emery was proved right when he brought on Aaron Ramsey uh, and he scored, you know, the decisive goal. Harry, I just got to bring up our defence because, you know, what is going on? Constantly changing it. Um, no semblance of organisation. The players don't look like they know what they're doing. I mean, I was defending Unai Emery on the weekend after the Liverpool game saying that, you know, he needs time and um, he needs money. He needs investment. But when you do see, you know, a team that are second bottom dominating us in in that in that way, it does really show that we need a big change. And, you know, a part of that is going to come from the investment, but a big part of that needs to come from the coaching. And I think that Emery really needs to look at it and, you know, hone down. I would say judge him after a year um, when he's actually had a, another window and a few more players that he needs to bring in. But it's not looking great, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, we are back to winning ways. I think we need to take the positives. Um, we can't be too critical. The only point I will make is that Emery, is he the boss that is going to take us back to the top? And for me, I'm not sure. When you look at Klopp and when you look at Guardiola, when they came in, they had their own philosophy and it was clear to see what they were doing, even though it didn't work straight away. Obviously, City didn't win it in the first season. weren't that great. Liverpool finished eighth in their first season on the clock. You could see what, what was happening and you could see the kind of effect that the managers were having on their players. With Arsenal, we started that. I think playing out from the back is obviously one of Emery's big tactical tweaks um, and high press. But defensively, it's just quite shocking, to be honest with you. And I think the, the time when we've defended the best was in the Spurs game in the 4-2 And I think that's because we defended collectively as a unit. And we're not seeing that of late. And I think we need to get back to that. Um, This whole Ozil-Ramsey saga needs to be put to bed now. It's gone on too far, way too long. You know, these players are getting a lot of money. I would say, you know, Ramsey, he's actually proven in spells to be a bit more of an important player for us at the moment. So why not just give him um, Ozil's money? He's getting 350 grand a week. I think Ramsey wanted about two. You know, get get rid of Ozil, send him out, and give some of that money to to Ramsey, who could be a more um, impactful player. I will say one quick thing as well, just in our creativity, it's all coming from the wings. Kalasinac has been one of our biggest, you know, providers of goals, and that just kind of tells you there's not much else coming from the midfield. When you have a midfield two or three of Guendouzi, Torreira, Xhaka, any combination of the three, it's not quite enough. We need more. We need Ozil either to come back into the side. Or we need Ramsey to stay because otherwise we are really, you know, not having that link between the defence and the attack. I think we look more comfortable in a five and we should stick with it purely because our wingbacks look more comfortable there. Um, But, you know, back to winning ways. Let's keep it going. Get back on another run. Hello, everyone. A very happy new year to you all. Arsenal obviously getting off to a very good start 
in 2019 with a 4-1 win over Fulham yesterday. I think, uh, you know, we got a little bit nervous at times during that first half um, with the, the opportunities we gifted Fulham. Um, but luckily their shooting boots went on. Ryan Sessignon in particular, um, he could have put him at least two up in that first half. But, you know, I think as, as the game went on, Arsenal grew into it more, started playing some good football. And obviously we got that first goal and um, went on from there, really, uh, and grew in confidence. I think, obviously, it's still a shame we conceded that goal. But look, it's the three points that matter. And it's a very important victory after that horror show at Anfield uh, the other week. It, you know, it was a game we needed to win today to to get the, the heads of the players back up and the fans as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can push on after yesterday now and get back into some good form. I'm sure Unai and his, and his team are working very hard to improve that defence because, obviously, that is one of the main factors that is really letting us down um, most weeks at the moment. So hopefully we can see some improvements with that over the next weeks and coming months. And obviously now the January transfer window is open as well. So hopefully we can see one or two players come in that will add extra depth and quality to the team and, and really help us out. Before I end this voice clip, Harry, it's actually I just want to mention and talk about uh, one of your contributors to your podcast and uh, someone who's who supports it as well. And it's about Claude um, from Arsenal Fan TV. I'm sure most of you who follow me on Twitter have seen that me and Claude have had a little bit of a disagreement. Um, and uh, I just literally wanted to say that it's what I've had to say uh, is is nothing personal against Claude. I'm sure he's a top and really nice bloke, really. But I just did not agree with what he had to say after yesterday's game. We we need to look at the positives at the moment, you know, and. And instead of singling out Unai Emery and, and questioning his ability and, and quality as a manager, with it, bearing in mind he's only been in charge of us for six months, just just talk about the win and, and focus on the positives, you know, and support the manager, back the manager, because I honestly believe now is not the time to single out Unai Emery and start questioning him um, after you know his his little time he's been in charge of us. We've finally got a new manager that we, I think most of us were all crying out for after Wenger's 22-year um, run with, with Arsenal Football Club. And now it's just a matter of, of if and when we are going to get back to the top. You know, it's going to be a process that which requires patience and support. And, you know, I just think it was a, a little bit disappointing for me to read and see hear what Claude had to say after the game and, and, and not just him really you know you, you see on social media uh, it's been quite a few people um, questioning Unai Emery and calling him out and I just honestly totally disagree with that at the moment now is not the time to be doing any of that all I'm wanting and all I'm asking for from every Arsenal supporter is just get behind the manager support the team now, another player who divides opinion is Alex Iwobi. Um, I put a tweet out shortly after the game where I spoke about the fact that I feel that uh, Alex Iwobi can be a really strong player for Arsenal if he gets his act together. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll read it for you word for word. I said, Iwobi's strong, powerful and an excellent dribbler. If he can improve his final ball and decision making, it's scary how good he could be. I can see why the boss is keen on him, but equally I can see how at times he can be so very frustrating. Now that tweet got me all sorts of uh, uh, comments, uh, I, I guess is a polite way of saying it. You know, people calling me crazy, deluded. What am I talking about? What do I see in Alex Iwobi? And I think you need to read that tweet properly to understand what I'm saying what I'm trying to say is that there is potential there um, there are attributes there that can be useful and I'd like to see more from Iwobi of course I would and I see why people get frustrated but I also see why the manager likes him so um, it's not all bad he's not a complete lost cause um, you know lots of you disagreed with my comments which is fine and football is all about opinions isn't it and I'm more than happy for you to challenge mine as long as it's done respectfully. Um, you know, there's always a few keyboard warriors that get a little bit carried away. 
Uh, so, yeah, if you want to have a chat about it, if you want to debate about it respectfully, no problem at all. Tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC or you can email me Chronicles AFC at Gmail dot com and I'll be happy to respond to your comments. Uh, James Benj of the London Evening Standard sent across his thoughts on the Nigerians progress under Unai Emery. Here's what he had to say. Alex Awobi has improved significantly during Unai Emery's brief reign as Arsenal manager. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they simply aren't looking hard enough. There's still the same issues that plagued him under Arsene Wenger, but he has got better in so many ways. Some visible, some not. I guess the most visible is that he has bulked up noticeably. He's not the only player who looks physically like a more powerful player under Unai Emery, but he's certainly one of the ones that has undergone the most dramatic transformation. I think one of the criticisms of him in, the, in his early years when he broke through was that he could maybe be pushed off the ball a bit too much. That's really not true anymore. And I think you could see that against Fulham. It was a very odd game because I thought in the in the first half he was absolutely fantastic and Arsenal's best player by a long shot. And he wasn't that bad in the second half, but he went off the boil a bit. And yet, I can only speak for, for what the Emirates fans are like around the press box, but it seems as though every error he makes, there's a tendency to, to jump down his throat as if he's one of the players that is considered most responsible for, for the sort of mo- or, or most reminiscent of the flaws of the final years of the Wenger era. I do think he's he's a very capable player. He's very good at playing the pass, a few passes before a goal-scoring chance or a goal. If you looked at his expected goals build-up in the last few seasons, he's consistently one of the highest-ranked Arsenal players per 90 minutes. And although that stat doesn't tell us everything, I think it kind of backs up the sense that Iwobi is a really important player in terms of building your way to goal. Emery has the same issues with him that Arsene Wenger did. He doesn't score enough and he doesn't get enough assists. That's sort of going in the right direction. He is still a bit poor in front of goal, but ultimately he's still a very young player and one that's absolutely worth persevering with. I found it bizarre when Arsenal fans said they wanted to sell him during the summer. I think he made the right decision signing a new contract and Arsenal made the right decision giving it to him. He he might never be a world beater. He might never be the best player in the Arsenal team, but I think he'll be a really valuable member of the squad for years to come. Some great points from James there. Right, just to round off this Shorter than usual episode. Like I said, I am traveling with work, unfortunately. Um, And uh, it's a little bit difficult to record on a train, particularly when you're sitting in the so-called quiet section. So I better hurry up and finish it off. Um, Just a few facts from uh, the Fulham game, from the aftermath of the Fulham game, I should say. Uh, Arsenal have scored 10 Premier League goals this season courtesy of substitutes that's more than any other team Claudio Ranieri has still never won a Premier League match against Arsenal in 11 attempts Arsenal have kept just one clean sheet in their last 14 Premier League games not good enough Um, and Granit Xhaka has scored three Premier League goals so I was right in his 20 appearances for Arsenal this season that's as many as in his previous two seasons combined so he has really Added goals to his game. Uh, something to be proud of, I guess. Uh, Alex Iwobi, who we were just speaking about, has been directly involved in three goals in his last four Premier League appearances. So despite what you might think of him, he is effective, isn't he? Uh, at least on paper, uh, the stats certainly say so. Three of Alexander Lacazette's seven Premier League goals this season have come against Fulham. Um So almost half against one team. That's incredible, isn't it? And Socrates registered an assist for the first time in his last 120 games. That was, of course, for the final goal for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's goal where he squared the ball um, across the edge of our box. And there was Aubameyang to uh, have a shot, which ultimately deflected in. That brings me to the end of another episode. Apologies for the short form once again. Like I said, I am traveling, um, but thought I'd put something out anyway. If you've got any questions, any comments, please do send them over. You know how to get in touch. If you're listening via iTunes or any other audio platform, please subscribe. And if you are watching on YouTube, apologies, there's no video this time, but you can still hit the like button. That's much appreciated. And of course, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, we are sponsored by loserpool.com, a fantastic new betting game. Um, Do check them out at loserpool.com and we'll be back very, very soon. 
Until next time, bye-bye.